Hi guys, welcome back to our Final Fantasy X HD Platinum walkthrough. We're just leaving the save. We're getting on the boat to Kilika. SS Leaky, which is a terrible name for a boat. This is a cutscene, but you can walk around and see this. You, just, you know, don't respect the cutscene. Cutscene doesn't respect you. So yeah, um, everyone's sad to see you go. Tidus is walking around in circles on the deck. There's really not much more to say. Um, I hope you took my advice in the last video and got your overdrives up. Because there are a couple of bosses coming up. Um, some important items we're going to get in this video are Elbed Primer number 3 and uh, some potions. That's it, really. <laughs> and you might not even be able to get the potions. There is a remedy as well. But anyway. So we're on a boat. We can have tons of fun here once all this cutscenery is over. So here Tidus assaults an innocent bystander and steals his binoculars. Nothing is said of this. Thinks he can do whatever he wants because he's a celebrity or whatever. Swipe the dude's binocs. Take a look around. Wait, Lulu. Finger on the bosom. Let's see that again in slow motion. Mm -hmm. Bosom. Yes, indeed. Alright, so. Damn! There's Yuna. She knows she's been left out. So I have to touch my hair. I see you in the way. And then the guy takes his knock me back. Somehow. From a squatting position, I don't really know what happened there. That's okay. You can uh, you can talk to that guy again, but he won't let you take his knock. If I am right, he asks you how many seagulls there are around the boat. I didn't talk to him to find out. I just said, you know, even not for We've talked to him again, I think he does. Uh, I believe there are 11 seagulls. We've done that, he might give it away. I thought that was on a different boat ride than the If you that. interfere with Yuna's pilgrimage, we won't take it lightly. You don't have to talk to Lulu here. I don't know. But like I said, I'll just talk to Lulu. So that's fine. Now, there's the binocular guy. Now, I do believe if you talk to him again, he asks you how many seagulls are. But anyway, just head below deck. You don't want one, he's got two after. No, sir. Ooh, fascinating now, this fine gentleman is Oaka the 23rd. And he's really he's kind of an annoying character. But you can give him money. And if you do, you'll get some. We'll get some money off I've no business with you. Anyway, later on. Much later on in the game. Awaka, the so, Merchant extraordinary. well, not much later on. Awaka, the who? But, Don't yeah, you. Me? Well, the thresholds for money are 1 gil, uh, 100 gil, 1000 gil, or actually 1 gil, 101 gil, 1001 gil, 10,000 gil. 10,001 gil is not worth it. 1001 gil. There's a small enough number to get decent prices later on. Uh, it's worth giving. So I give him 100 gil now, and you get plenty more chances to donate. So you won't be buying much at the start of the game anyway. We're right here to the engine room! He <laughs> said yawningly. So this is our first glimpse of Chocobos in the world of Final Fantasy X. The game calls them Chocobos. I call them chocolate like it says on the door because I like the chocolate yeah, but and not chocolate. Birds? but you know what's so strange about chocobo let's not fight about it chocobos those are chocobos what you've never seen a chocobo and it seems toxic but anyway other than that hmm. once this conversation is over now miracles and oddities oh, were starting God. to become daily routine on this trip miracles and oddities 
So head down to the bottom corner here, pick up that out. Well, not that far, but you can see it on the ground there. Albed Primer Volume 3. There we go. Talk to her, she sings a bit of the Chocobo music. She's like the famous, you know, whatever did Chocobo with the Final Fantasy. Mambo or Waltz or Electric or whatever did Chocobo you want. Follows the same tune. In this room here, um, there's a chest. In the chest is a remedy. Take the remedy. There are a couple of Besaid Oroks in here. Uh, one of them is looking at a guy puke. And the other one is puking. So, no, but he's watching him from the far end of the room. So he doesn't puke too. Now, we'll take a look. We have eight potions here. This box will magically produce potions until you have 20. If you come here with zero potions, you've got 20. If you came here with eight, so you'll get 12 potions. I fast forward it, you know, it's going to kick the box a bunch of times. But, uh, there we are, our final kick. And, once again, we've got 20 potions. So if you come here with 20 potions, you won't get anything out of the box. That's the way it is. The game just wants to supply you with potions. Uh, we can go down here and speak to Luzu and Gata, who will be in the cage about, about something. But we'll find out what that is. Area. Our operation depends on this cargo. Before too long. Maybe four hours or so. Which is why, you know... Probably ten videos or something. But you'll see it eventually, don't worry. So we save. Very important that you save. Like I said, two bosses coming up. One's very easy. One could potentially game over you if you're not prepared. I'll get you through it though, don't worry. So up here, there's nothing, but I have to come up and check. And here on the bridge of the boat, there's also nothing. But you can talk to the guys in here, you know. Speak to everybody, but be antisocial. Now, what you want to do to progress the game is speak to Waka and to Yuna. And then Come to think of it, I haven't told you where we're going. To Yuna again, I think. First to Kilika Island. Then we so Waka is explaining our itinerary. We're going to Kilika Island. Though, Yuna's gotta pray at the temple. That's where you get your second Aeon. We'll be praying for the Aura's Kilika. victory too. So you come along. Guess yeah? where we'll be in the next video. <sighs> Kilika. That's great right. plan. However, did you guess? Hey, it is a great plan. Don't Waka look at wants me. to pray to win the throne. Lulu is telling me dumbass. Talk to Lulu again. She says I same thing. Same way. So you can't kick these bits while it's like Word is that Damn. summoner's got noble blood. I heard she's Lord Braska's daughter. You don't say. Lord Braska's daughter. There we daughter? get the, the bomb drop. <laughs> the unit is the daughter. I like Summoner Braska. Anyway, talk to Waka again. So, yeah. is Yuna's father famous or something? She's uh, a daughter exactly who High Summoner Braska. Braska was. saw his statue at the temple. Lord Braska defeated Sin ten years Lord ago. Lord Braska is a cool guy. He killed Sin one time ago. Now so Yuna wants to kill Sin too. That's the plot of the game. It's tough. <sighs> when your father's famous. Tiddly Winks is whining is because his daddy was famous. In the imagination department. Huh? <laughs> Thanks, Lulu. I'll keep that in mind. Now, the crowd around Yuna you know, is dispersing, but Lulu moved, so I thought she might have something new to say, so I followed it. She has nothing new to say. That was a disappointment for me. But anyway, now we can talk to Yuna and get on with the game. Isn't that wonderful? Except that this conversation lasts like another five minutes. So I'm going to talk over it, you jerk. Ooh! So yeah, there isn't much strategy to discuss at this point in the game. But it's quite easy, still. And we're quite limited in our options at the moment, because we don't have any abilities, we don't have all the characters, whatever. But the next class... Well, if I say this now, I'll have nothing to say while we're fighting them. But I guess I won't. The wind. Let me discuss my reference materials for this walkthrough. I have got the... Ugh, P. 
piggyback guide to Final Fantasy X, which I've had for years. And I went ahead and I bought the Brady Games guide to Final Fantasy X and Ten Two HD Remastered, which surprisingly is only a couple of pages longer than the Final Fantasy X guide by itself. It's got both games squeezed in there. But it's pretty good. It's pretty comprehensive. You if you want a... You that from Waka? Mm -hmm. huh. If you want a text companion to Waka. play in this game, you can, you can do worse. At all. It's even got a, a list of all the Blitzball players mm. in the game, and their stats, and you know, their stats at level 3, and then their stats at level 99. So it's I very useful if you are interested in Blitzball. The original guide didn't have that. All lit up, um, even obviously night. it goes into some of the trophies that you wouldn't normally and the stands are obviously wouldn't have in the PS2 guide. How do you know that? Uh, a it's it's a little lacking in some areas. Like, he was my father's it, it, it gives very brief descriptions of each area. Yeah. Very brief boss descriptions. Yeah. Um, but it does the job. You know, I can't complain my about father. it. The 10 2 side of it? His name is Jekt. From what I'm looking at, like I, I never played Ten Two religiously, but I don't think this guide would get you 101 percent or 100 percent or whatever it you is know, to get the secret a ending. Like this must be the blessing of Yevon. So you're going to be looking at two playthroughs, probably. Sounds like him, but it can't be him. But I again, I say that I barely flick through it. It does go into all the different dress spheres and stuff. My old man, he died. And all of the different. Uh, Ten years ago. Off the coast of Xanarchy. Sphere holders, I forget what they're called. I'm Garment sorry. grids, that's it. He went out so to yeah. see for training one but day. the 10 side of it is good, I, I can vouch for that. It's got a good bestiary. It doesn't go into detail on the monster arena then. the way the PS2 one did. But it goes into detail on Blitzball. So. Why, the day that Jekt came to I guess you take what you get. It's true, I first met Jekt 10 years and 3 months ago. Yeah. I remember that was the day my father left. Those two are still talking. Unbelievable. Um, the date fits, doesn't it? The, yeah. The <laughs> so when the time comes to play Blitzball, yeah, but how he get here? there is a mandatory game, and I will play that. I've already played that. I I'm won. Not. It's hard to win. <laughs> I'll give you some advice, and anyone can win. It takes some luck. One is good. Anyone can win. He just seriously looks wrecked there. Anyway, finally something is happening. The boat is tipping, a man is rolling across the deck. What's going on here? Big waves, man. Don't let go, Titus. Don't let go. Her fingers clipped right through your hand and she, she, she slipped away. Unfortunately, she landed on the giant crossbow with all boats coming. And Kamari with his uh, paws when he slide around the deck. So here we go. The white whale. Sin himself. Attacking our little boat. Bit of a delayed reaction from the moment, but that's okay. Let's get to What do you think? Oh, he's firing that harpoon. Stick a harpoon in him and we'll all get dragged under. Sin is going for Kilika. We gotta distract it. Our families are in Kilika. Forgive us, Lady Summoner. Say so, you no, know, do what you gotta do. Wait. Yeah, protect your family. Oh boy. Fire that harpoon. Punk. So, yeah. There we go. They buried themselves in his hide pretty well. But you'll see later on then. Other people try to attack him. Standing again near him. So the harpoons. Straight in. So, yeah. Seems like, hey man, what's going on? I have to go on the water and I'll throw you all down or whatever. And gonna. So cutscene to this with his fabulous hair. He's like, no, no. And then these sin scales come in. And the boss starts. 
Voss has since been his 2000 health. You need to do 1000 damage to overkill him. So that's an Aeon Overdrive for sure at this point. So I'm going to shout cheer. Can. That's about all Titus can do in this fight. He can't reach since Finn to attack. Now we bring in Waka. And we'll start killing Sin Scales. Only kill two of them. If we kill two, there'll be one left. And he'll never send more down. Kill all three, Finn will restore them. So you just kill two of them. Uh, let that be enough. So we're not going to kill him. Waka controls ball, it's in spin. Do a small bit of damage. Not much. Uh, Kamari can use his Lancet technique to sap HP. Promise it. Very useful. And uh, Lulu can cast spells on him. And other than using Veil for that is the only way we can reach this. Fire. Sin has no elemental weakness, so use whatever spell you want. I use fire because I think it has a quick, uh, quick casting animation. You just keep an eye on his health, and as soon as it's around a thousand, bust out the that was overdrive. Otherwise, you can just slowly chip him down. It won't take that long. But it'll take a lot. Using unit to cast cure when you need to get some health back. So, like right now, Lulu's health is low. But she's up there. So we can bring in unit. Cure. Something about the targeting in this game. You target your people or your enemies. It's all over the place. I don't remember it being that bad in Final Fantasy X on PS2, but I have trouble with it in this one. So just be careful and don't be mashing X while you're trying to select your target. You could screw yourself over and kill the enemy. So all you, as you can see, as long as there's one sin spot on the field, all sin spin will do. Move around. You just kill them all off with fire more. You don't have to worry about that this way. Now I'm going to summon Veil for. This is the short Aeon animation, so he comes in and she rubs in, and that's fine. And. We're gonna use Energy Blast on Sin Spin. You can't use it to target both him and the Sin Scales. I think it's because of the way the battle is set up, but normally it does get all in. It just seems fairly off. But anyway, kaboom. Well, I'm up. I did 1500 damage, so I could run into this fight a lot sooner. But I didn't want to take any chances. So there's our overkill. And that's the end of that fight. Not too bad. Lots of water falling everywhere, that's fine. Everyone's okay. Since gone. Except where is Titus? Walker reaches the only sensible conclusion. I abandoned the ship. Which is fine because he can hold his breath underwater forever and ever 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 and luckily so can Titus because otherwise he would be dead. Drowned. No good. So there he is, knocked out underwater, getting fucking carved up by Sim scales. Like, you don't even give a damn. Walker's ball comes in. Whoosh, 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 pinballs off the ball. Wish he could do that in real battles because that's pretty. Nope. Pulls Titus out. Throws a potion at him. And that's fine. I always find it weird when they use potions outside of battles in Final Fantasy games. Whatever. Here come some dolphins. 
and naturally dolphins only run away from boss fights. So here we go. The second boss of the two in a row boss battle. Soon spawn Aquiles or Equiles or whatever you want to call them. He's got two thousand hit points and he could actually kill you. I mean it's possible. What you wanna do is start using cheer. Use cheer five times. Um I'm gonna use Rocket's Overdrive here and I'm gonna screw it up royally. What you want is lightning. So naturally I got water, and then ice, and then ice. If you get all three, he attacks every enemy on the field with that element. If you get two, he attacks a random enemy with that element. If you get one, he just throws the ball for a little bit of extra damage at one random enemy. So I was trying to get three lightnings and I got blue. So we use chair again, that means two times. And on your next turn with Waka, you want to use Dark Attack on the boss. Again, you can ignore the sin scales because they'll just come back and kill them. We'll use Dark Attack. It'll blind the boss. And that's what you want. Um, I went ahead and attacked the sin scale there. Maybe because I wanted to show you that they come back, I don't know. But anyway, use Dark Attack. That blinded. Now, well, unfortunately, at this point, I didn't have any sensor weapon for either Peters or Walker. So you just gonna have to keep track of how much health he has left so you can overkill him. Um, try to save Titus's overdrive for the overkill. So that move is Blender. That's what we used Dark to try and avoid, which didn't work. As you see, he is Dark, and but he's still not nice Titus. So just use a potion. If your health goes yellow, use a potion. Good rule. So we use here again. This is to ensure we do enough damage with the overdrive. It's probably a little overkill to do this, since his overkill value is only 400. But at the same time, you don't want to waste the overdrive and not kill him, and thus lock yourself out of an overkill. So we use here again. That's what, four times, I think? Here's a potion on Thetis. So, you know, hopefully the strategy is obvious here. Spam cheer, and try to keep Darkness on the boss until you feel like his health is low enough to finish him off with Thetis' overdrive. If you use cheer five times, and you're roughly the same point as Spear Grid as me, which is the same nowhere, then you should have an easy time in this. I'm using Blender again. And then he hit. I don't know, I, maybe he... no, he can definitely miss the time. Sure. So now I cut my losses, I figured he was down to about 500 health. Um, I think this is where we use the overdrive. Yep, so it plays Spiral Club. And I was surprised by how much damage this actually did. Again, I could have ended this fight sooner, but it was like 912 damage for the overkill. We only needed 400. So, maybe an uncheered overdrive would do it as well, but why take the chance? Actually, not maybe, definitely. But again, why take the chance? You don't have to. So that's that. We're getting off this boat now. We got a couple of items there, and neither of them are great, but they're random drops. You know, bosses don't always drop specific loot. They can they can randomly drop things with certain things. So we got a lot of ice there, so they can drop ice touch. I don't know which boss it is that drops it. But so we'll just sit back and enjoy this cutscene. Which sin lays waste to any guy bridge? Do that he does. This is where we think that uh, sin is actually a pretty bad dude, and not just a way that sucks people up. It's transports him through time. He does legit kill people, and it's even more than
He also has a city on his head for some reason. So yeah, sin is like an unnatural disaster. Right at the point where he comes in and he's got a tornado above his head for some reason. A tornado of wood and corpses. When Sin attacked Xanarkin that day, I woke up in Spira. I kept hoping it would work in reverse. Wah, wah, too. Wah, wah. So, Cadis aside, uh, we arrived we'll at the scene of the defeat. Sin. I must uh, defeat Sin. is filled with a newfound resolve to defeat Sin. I was just fooling myself. Cadis puts his head in a lap for some Maybe reason. it was that day. Everyone's sad. See, yeah. under the burning sun. Sad things happen. Everyone gets sad. And I started to give up hope. You know, that's how it is. I was in a foreign world. I wasn't going home. This was my new reality, and I was stuck in it for good. All grimness aside, we have arrived at the next area of the game, which is Kilika. And. Well, let's look at the map. Feel like a port. There you go. That's where we are. Feel like a port. So, in the next episode, we're going to explore Kilika a little bit, get some items, and move on to the temple. Although we won't reach temple yet, but there's some stuff to do with prayers. But anyway, yeah. Everyone gets off the boat. I am the summoner Yuna. Yuna's life is up, guys. Sorry about it, but I'm dying. Milady Summoner! And she's like, I'll be sending. And Peter's is like, oh? What? Thanks, BT. Thanks, BT. We feared they would become fiends. Please, take me to them. Yeah, We'll go see what we can do to help in town. Huh? Yeah. So that's the end of that video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.